singing, but if he comes in, we'll make him do an encore. Uh, if, he, yes. if we have a cameo, we'll uh, I don't know. I don't know. A lot of people missed it. We can ask him for the encore. They didn't record it? No, an encore. No, but did they record it? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, it's all over YouTube. Oh, I, oh, I had love the whole and you look so sparkly. You did. You were in your element. I was having fun. Oh yeah. My sparkle jacket. It was. Really? I can see it glittering all over. How are we doing on members? Guests. Any? We have a lot. Is it? Oh good. All right, this is a test. Thank you, Michael. Can you guys? Yes. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes? Okay. I'm not hearing him say yes. Mitchell, can you hear us? Hello. He might have lost connection. And now I'm not able to hear you guys. Okay. Can you hear us background chatter? Oh, can, now I hear you. Can you hear us, Mitchell? You can hear us, Mitch? He, he oh, might, now I hear you. You might be intermittent connection. From our end or his end? From probably his end. Cause he's, he he's cleaned the Wi-Fi. Okay. He's probably walking outside. Oh, he doesn't have it on the cell. No, he's, he's probably him. He's, he's probably on my Maybe my connection. Yeah, I think uh, connection. Uh, yeah, it's so good. She has not jumped in yet. Okay. I'll let you know. Do you separately want to send her a link again? I will send her a link again. If you feel like there's yeah. something to do that. I will send her to well, I do hear the noise in the room pretty clear. Okay, can you hear me? I'll oh, hear it loud and clear. Perfect. Okay, great. Thank you. Right, cool. Come back. Come on back. Come on home. He's like home. <laughs> yeah. All right, good, good. <laughs> so we have a really loaded agenda, so we're going to start up now. It's about 10 after. I just want to get through um, a few slides. There's the person who's coming, if you read the agenda from the Google, uh, from the company that's going to be doing a little virtual presentation for us, and then Rama's going to be presenting the Raspberry Pi at the end. So we'll just go through a few of the things. Thank you so much for the IT people for setting this all up, and our hospitality people for setting out the food, and the provost slash president for supplying that. Um, he may be stopping by to say hello in the next half an hour or so. Um, Hopefully the Google Hangout people can hear us. I'm not sure how many members we have to like click around a little bit. Um, little official chapter business that we've been kind of talking about. We need to review the minutes to get the, the technical business off. If you weren't at the meeting on March 11th, then you can't vote. But if you were at the meeting and you've read the minutes, and we can vote to approve them. Does anybody have any comments on the minutes that we need to clarify? Don't anybody send any information about? Okay, so vote for comments from. Okay, so vote for approval of the minutes from the March 11th meeting. Okay, Amy says yes. Yes, and second. second by Meredith or Michelle, or both. Pick one. Pick one. Okay, then make sure you're raising your hand for the next thing too. We need volunteers. I didn't see a lot of hands go up yet, so. Um, so this is our little congratulations dinner. Thank you all for being involved and getting involved in the group here. It's been great. I've heard some great conversations. It's been really fun. If you're first meeting, welcome. 
Um, if you've been to all of them, great. Thank you very much. Um, so we were officially sanctioned by the Computer Science Teachers Association national level on uh, March 25th. So we were kind of expecting that at our last meeting. So um, we have over 60 members, and 35 people replied they were going to be attending today. And it's a really good group. A couple more coming in. Hi. Grab something to eat. We're just going over the, like, the business on those things. So yeah, there's a couple of chairs up here and around. Um, if you have an open chair, let them know. Thank you. Um, if you haven't yet signed up for Computer Science Teachers Associate membership, it's free. There's some papers floating around. And at the end, um, as Brahma's getting ready, if you want us to help you so, so you can sign up online, which is a little quicker and doesn't get lost in the mail like sometimes they do, um, we can do that online. Um, so there's a handout there that talks about the benefits. It's free to individuals. Um, so if you're interested, sign up, and then we can add you to that membership, the numbers that we have. And then there's a lot of benefits. Once you sign up, you can get a lesson plans for all the different age levels. I believe there's stuff for university professors there as well. Um, I haven't looked at that area too much. So there's a lot of good stuff on there. So that's the link. This presentation will be sent out or um, posted, so you can just click on the links when you get uh, the link for that. Um, we have a new website, so we'll send that out to you. It's just been updated because once we got our official chapter status and they went through some of the logistics, we have a new website. So um, again, you can go to, if you can't remember what it is and you want to ch click on it, just go CSTA New Jersey and then this one will pop up and you can just click on the Southern New Jersey tab. I like to click on the other ones too and see what else is going on in the rest of New Jersey and then you can go to the parent group that I just showed you, the other link. Um, and that will show you what's happening, you know, issues around the country. Um, we also have, um, so that's that link. And there's also a Facebook presence, um, a Google Plus community where a lot of our documents will be. If you want to go back and um, see Rama's presentation afterward, you want to click on it and see some different things and a lot of contact information and so on will be on that. So you can click that, make sure you have your, you know, get involved in that. If you have any problems getting to it, email either myself. Dawn or Michelle, and we'll get you set on that. And you can follow on the CSTA and J hashtag for Twitter. Um, we, have to, we have to stop broadcasting for a second so she can get in. Okay. So she's trying to hear me. Do you want me to um, stop sharing? Stop. What do you want me to do? Um, I'll, I'll can you do it? I'll come okay. Mm -hmm. I'm so sorry. Once it goes on air. This means you can run up and get some more food right now if you want. Mm -hmm. Hey. You can keep talking. <laughs> I, I want to talk about the next slide, and I can't read all those words. Okay. Stop broadcasting. We were going to focus on teaching students about how to code in Scratch. The reason we did that is because um, all of the data we collected around engagement resoundingly said that Scratch and App Inventor were the most engaging tools for students. They liked them the most. Um, we chose not to pursue App Inventor because we wanted to make sure that anyone could run our CS First programs. And in order to do App Inventor, you sort of need to have mobile devices, and so that could be a barrier for entry. So we decided to do Scratch because it's all web-based. <coughs> we also honed in on the um, identity building years. So fourth through eighth grade, you know, um, really focusing on middle school, sixth through eighth grade, but uh, our fourth and fifth grade teachers keep convincing us that <laughs> their students should do CS first too. So we mainly target fourth through eighth grade. Uh, we built 64 pilot lessons. So all of those lessons had a standard structure, which I'll talk about in a little bit. And uh, we tested them with about 1,000 students in Charleston, the Charleston area. Then uh, we polished them up, made some small tweaks, and we launched two modules or themes of curriculum on the CS First website. So that's cs-first.com. And uh, so that was about a year ago. And we continued developing more curriculum. And so, you know, about once a month, we launch a new theme. Uh, and each theme has, I can't remember if I said this already, about 10 hours worth of content. Uh, so as of April of 2015, we had 35,000 students. Today, we just crossed the 45,000 students mark. So I'm really excited about that. We have seven themes or modules launched publicly that anyone can use. They're completely free. And we have four themes in development, two of which are advanced. So they're much more advanced than the ones that uh, we've released so far. So uh, 
basically, I want to talk a little bit about why we chose to do what we did with CS First. And that's because of data that has been collected and you know studies that have been done about what motivates girls and other underrepresented minorities to study computer science. So this is, uh, we're going to zoom in on a study about why girls or women choose to study computer science later in life and so looking at what their experience was when they were younger. Um, but we looked at similar data for racial minority students and just students in general. So for girls, the key factors that influence them to study computer science are actually things that we can influence as teachers and as people who are trying to engage with students. So do girls believe that they would be interested in a job that could use computer science? Do they perceive the careers using computer science to be cool and interesting and impactful? Uh, the next key influencing factor in their decision is if someone just encouraged them to study it. So did a teacher or a parent or a peer tell them to study computer science and encourage them? 22%, this is where you all come in if you're uh, classroom teachers, is whether or not they had the chance to just experience it in school. So um, did, they, uh, did they get to see it in some way? It's not even did they do well in the class, it's just did they get the chance to do it. And then last is self-perception. Do they see themselves as the type of person who would be good at computer science? So in CS First, we try to target all four of these areas. First, we tackle the career perception piece by showcasing different types of careers in every single lesson that we have. And so um, you have, uh, like this is an example in the fashion curriculum where we're showcasing an app that someone made called Watch Store, and this guy is virtually trying on a watch on his wrist, and he can customize it. Okay. Sorry, there's an echo. Is everything okay on your end? We're good. We can, we can shut our mic off. Um, yeah, if you could shut the mic off, unless someone has a question, then just jump in. That'd be great. Awesome. Okay. So uh, this is an app where he can digitally try on watches. And so this is an unexpected way of using computer science that could really appeal to students who are interested in fashion. So every single lesson has different ways that computer science is used in the real world. Uh, social encouragement. So there are two major ways that we target social encouragement in CS First Clubs. One is just that at the end of every lesson, students are given time to share their project with a neighbor. And to, they're prompted to encourage each other. Uh, another thing is that at the end, after that sharing time, the teacher randomly selects students whose work will be shown in the next activity. And um, so the next time the next time the group meets, they the teacher pulls up the projects on the board or the smart board, and then uh, they look at them, they talk about what's awesome in the code, and then everyone claps and cheers for that student. So they're getting really a ton of um, positive social encouragement and feedback about their work. Academic exposure, basically the way that we targeted this is that we uh, really advocate for CS First to be run by teachers in school. So whether that's during the school day or as an after school club, either one is fine. Uh, but we chose to really focus on having a real time experience in real life rather than students just, you know, taking a massively open online course um, in a one-on-one -on -one setting at home or something like that. So that's why we chose to focus on partnering with teachers. And then self-perception. Um, so every module of CS First has a theme. And we don't ask students to sign up for a uh, coding club or a computer science club. A lot of students don't even know what computer science is in middle school. And so we say, hey, sign up for the storytelling club or the social media club. And then uh, during the club, they use code to pursue whatever that intrinsic motivation is, whatever that passion is, so they build stories in Scratch about themselves, or they build applications that would be interesting to a fashion designer type person. And then over the time, we slowly help them build up their own identity as a computer scientist. So we know that they're not going to come in perceiving themselves as computer scientists, and we help them develop that identity over time. So about CS First. Um, our objectives are not around content acquisition. So our goals are not to teach like recursion or anything like that. Our goal is just having an engaging first experience with coding so that you feel like you could tackle another experience with coding in the future. So you might be a good fit for 
exploring computer science later in life, or you might be a good fit for AP computer science. You'll have the courage and confidence to jump into new situations with computer science. You'll be able to persevere when things get tough in those situations. Uh, you'll know that it's really important to study computer science because you'll know that it has a huge impact on the world around us. And also, uh, CS for students, we hope, will have a sense of belonging in tech, especially our underrepresented students. So, like I said, we have themes. We'll skip that. Um, so a little bit about each club. Every club has a host. Uh, so that's a teacher or facilitator um, who has the space and the students who are going to participate in the club. Like I said, they can do it during the school day or as an after-school club, whatever's fine. They can even do it during summer school, anything. Totally just take the content and run with it. We have gurus who are volunteers who can help lead the club. So we know teachers are super busy and might not have time to facilitate computer science clubs. And so we do have a volunteer matching service where if you sign up on our website and uh, we know of any volunteers in your area, then we'll help match you with them so that they can come in and lead the club. And then you need students who are going to participate. So our volunteers are role models from the community. They're just additional adults who are investing time in students. Uh, it's really awesome when they're people who work in industry and want to mentor. But they do not have to have any tech experience whatsoever to help out. All they have to do is be excited and willing to go in and like, look at the work that students are doing. Uh, so club structure, just a brief overview. Every single club has a similar structure. So there's an opening discussion. We provide lesson plans with all of this breakdown for the teachers and facilitators. So there are uh, discussion questions that you can use. You can make up your own if you want to, but we do provide them for you. You showcase the projects, like I talked about before. And there's about 40 minutes of work time. So students put on those headphones, like you see in the picture, and they watch short videos that the CS First team has developed, and they're published on our website. Um, and they follow along in Scratch. So this means that the teacher doesn't actually have to do any of the teaching. You don't have to stand up at the board and write out code or draw out Scratch blocks or anything like that. Uh, students are getting all of their content from the videos. Your job as the teacher is just to walk around and answer questions and to be encouraging. Uh, at the end, there's a closing discussion. And students have the chance to give each other shout outs. They share projects with their friends. You choose who's going to be showcased next time, all that sort of stuff. Um, so next is impact. Uh, to date, this slide is out of date. I'm sorry. We have had 45,000 students. And 70% uh, of our students are female and or minority students, which I'm super excited about. Uh, here's a picture of where we are across the world. So we're actually expanding internationally. We're really excited. Uh, we collect a lot of data about what we're doing, but I'm just going to gloss over this for now. This is all on our website if you want to see the data about uh, students' attitudes toward computer science uh, as a result of participating in CS First. Also, as a teacher, all of this data is available to you, so you can uh, get all of these metrics to share back with your school, principal, whatever you need. Uh, we're going to skip these slides. These are just quotes from people. So how do you start a club? If you're interested, what do you do? Or if you have a teacher friend or someone else you know who might be interested, what do you do? So all you need is a computer lab with internet, which most schools have nowadays. You need a teacher who's going to help supervise. And optional are the gurus to facilitate the club. You can be the guru if you want to. Totally encourage that. So what Google provides to you is you just sign up, our website, sign up on our website. And we have lots of resources for you. So we will ship you a kit of materials, which includes passports. It's like a little booklet for students. And they can put stickers in the booklet. Stickers are so motivating for kids. Um, there's a community board that we send you where they can post their shout outs. We send you club plans and all of the solution sheets for the projects. We send marketing flyers, uh, certificates for students. We even have contingency plans in case all of your tech fails and you don't know what to do. And then the last thing is, if your school doesn't have headphones already, we can provide headphones to you. So what do you do to get started? You just go to cs-first.com slash start-club. Creating a club takes about five to 10 minutes. It's actually really quick. Our website guides you through the steps. All you have to do is choose a theme, request materials if you want them. You create a schedule. It's really critical that you create a schedule because we can't ship you materials until we know the date that you need them by. Uh, and then you check your computers to make sure that they're all ready to go. So basically that Scratch is accessible 
from your computers. So yeah, that is about it. Um, our team email is csfirst-info at google.com. And you can reach me personally at CSP, which stands for Kate Sydney Pickens, at google.com. Um, so I'm going to close this so I can actually see you guys now. Um, and then if you have any questions, I would love to answer them for you. Yes, so you're going to have to take the mic, you're going to have to turn the mic back on. All right, look. Can you hear us? Yep. Hi, uh, you know, I've been, I just started a CS First Club in um, my middle school in uh, December, and our kids absolutely love it. I did the game design, and um, actually we couldn't, I couldn't see them for eight weeks because we're doing a part test. And they were so, every time I ran into a kid in the hallway, they were so upset that they couldn't come to my room and do it because we meet um, during tutorial for only one team. And I would say half of my kids are um, female, and I have a large percentage of underrepresented children. But they really, really love it. And what I really like about it that I don't see in my regular classroom is that they help one another. They want a, a, another child to get it. Like if somebody gets caught, like today there was a, an XY, the kid came over and he's showing, he's explaining what was wrong with the code for uh, his platform game. But uh, I have some kids that have gone all the way through it. I have another girl who actually did the, um, the uh, fashion design on her own because she loved the game design so much. Yay. It's fabulous. I'm so glad to hear that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Other questions? Any other questions for her? So I do have one other thing to mention that I forgot. I'm guessing some of you are going to be high school teachers in the audience. So you're probably thinking, hey, this doesn't really apply to me because it's not designed for high school kids. Um, what I would really recommend is having some of your high school students go and help teach this club at local schools. So high school is an amazing role model. Um, they don't need to know how to come in order to teach it either. It's a great confidence building experience and uh, usually the elementary and middle schoolers love having the high schoolers come in and volunteer. And the, your videos are very self-explanatory. I don't know what you mean. They're very, they're very easy to understand. I have no problem. Between the kids, they can figure it out themselves. They don't even really need me there at all. Yeah. <laughs> we actually have one club in South Carolina where, for some reason, I think the teacher had some sort of family emergency or whatever, and uh, so she just didn't show up at all. And the kids ran the club themselves anyway. Yeah, they could. <laughs> I do have a question. Um, the presentation that you showed us, is. can you put the link to that in the, in the chat? Uh, sure, let me work on that. Okay, just, you know, before, before we stop broadcasting at any point, that would be lovely. All right. All right. Any other questions? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you can go, you can say try, go under the trial. You don't even actually have to sign into a club. It was a try now, I think it says, and you can try it and watch any of the videos. Now, the, our school blocks Google, so I have to go home, take the activity project, Project, the project starter kits, save them, and then put them onto my common drive. That's the only glitch, and it's, it's our school because we're blocked from that. But they can read the hint sheets, they can read the directions, they can watch the videos, they just can't use the starter project. Do, do, do they have to have Google Plus enabled for it? I guess so. No, I, don't I, IT, okay. I don't know. IT says it. There were, maybe eventually we will be able to. I don't know why. Yeah, we definitely have that locked down for our students. We don't have that in so you do not have to have a Google Apps for Education account or anything like that. Uh, the way that it works is that you register using an email address, so that can be a Google email address or any other type of email address. You register, and then you get a club code that you tell your students, and they log in to the club code. And then we generate a username for them, so it gives them a CS First username and a Scratch username. And then you get a list of all those usernames and passwords so that you can track how your students are doing as well. 
a lot of our students already have scratch accounts at our school district. Does it they need to use the new one? Yeah, so that is something that we hear often from people who are already like ahead of the game in teaching computer science. Um, that their students already have scratch accounts. That's something that I'm looking on figuring out how we can fix so that we can prompt students what is your scratch login and then we can let them use it so that you can the teacher can still do analytics for students based on whatever their previous scratch login is. Right now we don't support that but uh, it's definitely a problem we've heard about and so we're working on figuring out how to support it on our site. Okay. When I save it to my common drive, I can have the kids upload files and keep their existing scratch account in, in you know, it doesn't affect their scratch account. It's just an added file. Okay. Yeah. Uh, are you planning to also introduce any actual uh, real coding, uh, like Python or Java? Have you started that? Uh, so, great question. I First of all, I want to push back a little bit and uh, say that I don't think Scratch programming is real programming. Uh, my background is in computer science, and I think that all of the concepts that you learn when you do Scratch are things you do when you work in a text-based language. Uh, that said, we, uh, we have been considering doing something with text-based languages as a follow-up on uh, the current CS First modules. So basically you would do CS First with Scratch and then we would transition into something with text. And so we are exploring it. We don't have it currently at this time. Uh, I had a comment. I agree that Scratch is a programming language, but it's like you are on training wheels in a nice park with no yeah. traffic. But when you are on the Java superhighway in your car, you know, kids are struggling even with a small parenthesis, indentation in Python, and I mean, they are not able to really, I mean, they know the concepts of programming, but yeah. when to real life coding, you know, real world programming, uh, we need to have a proper transition path from uh, this block programming to uh, coding. Yeah, so I have a, something that I'm really excited to show you. It's not CS first at all, and it's not like a final product, but I'm going to share my screen again really quick, and I'm going to show you uh, what I think the answer is going to be in general to that question. Uh, so tell me, can you see my screen now? Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. So this is pencil code, pencilcode.net. It was, it's a teaching tool that was developed by a Googler. Um, and so it is a transition tool. So right now uh, I am running, a, you can see it, right? I'm running a program in with blocks. It looks pretty similar to Scratch, uh, but it does show me exactly everything that I'm doing. It highlights the code. It can tell me where my code is executing, things like that. And the best part is that there's this little button down here, and I can switch it, and it goes into text mode. So this is actually script code which is a like a shorter version or an abbreviated version of JavaScript. So this is real CoffeeScript code that you could run in, um, in any sort of environment that will run CoffeeScript. You can also turn on, you could make it JavaScript instead if you want, um, or you can turn on CSS and HTML and you can put uh, web development code in here. And so that will all come seamlessly together. You can at any time switch back to blocks and it'll translate it back for you. Uh, so I could enter in, I could type in forward 100, write 80, I can change this here, and then when I go back, it's all still right there. And I can edit it here as well. So, And you can run it in either environment. I can run it in text, I can run it in blocks, whatever I want. So I would really encourage you, uh, if you're interested in this problem, to explore using this tool on your own. Um, so let's see, leave this page. There's some great resources. There's um, some example lessons that you could use. There's uh, materials for teachers here. There's even a book with example projects that the developer wrote. So it's, um, let's see if we can pull it up. Uh, it's like 100 programs that you could teach kids how to do and the code that you would need to do it. Um, what's great about this is it's a full language. There's n like everything that works in JavaScript works in pencil code. 
So uh, students can even use like socket.io. They can spin up their own servers. They can make uh, real-time chat systems that work on the internet, in between computers, all that. So I think this is a really powerful tool. Um, but right now we don't have CS First lessons that use it. I'm hoping we might make them one day, but that's still to be determined. That will work. That's web-based. It will work with Chromebooks. Yeah, it's all web-based. Any other questions? Well, I, the, the silence is people thinking because everybody's definitely thinking about all this great stuff you've told us about. So I'm sure we'll have a lot of questions when we start dialoguing a little bit toward the end. Yeah, please feel free to email me or our team with any questions. I'm going to put um, I'm going to type my email address in the chat so you at least have it. Um, it's really terrific, terrific. Uh, the CS First program is great and I like that new tool. So thank you so much for uh, giving us all this information. Well, thank you guys for having me. Uh, it's great to meet you all, and please feel free to email me. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to head out. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Or wherever we were. <laughs> uh, all right, so on that note, we can chat about that a little bit later on, and maybe we'll do something um, with it at our next couple meetings. Um, any comments or questions before I move on? I thought it was fantastic. I can't wait to I can't wait to start playing with it. And out of the not quite so, I'm not going to read this whole thing, but there's three separate kinds of legislations. Daryl Dietrich is uh, the founder of the CSTA Central Jersey group and was really, really helpful in getting us set up um, and is still very actively involved, but he's now working on legislation mostly, you know, advocacy for legislation in New Jersey to help make computer science count as either a math or science to also create computer science standards and curriculums, and also add an endorsement for teachers to have a teaching certification endorsement in um, computer science. So those are three things that are in the works. That's his update. You can read it on the PowerPoint when you get to that. Um, but one of the things they've been pushing a lot in the other two Jersey um, groups has been to try to be helpful in, you know, sending messages to legislators. If you are interested in helping out that way, you can go right there and just um, contact the various legislators in our area that have an impact. And even if it's not our area and you know that there's a, either a name you're familiar with and you just send them in information, it just helps to get the word out there to people who may not be the ones that have to know right this second, but you could um, really help out a lot if you have a time to do that. So the names of the people that you'd want to um, contact are in there and how to get to them is on there and there's also if you you know search for computer science you can get all that information and if you have specific questions i can give you daryl's email address if you want like that i'm sure he'd be happy to hear from it and get some more support for his cause and our cause so we heard from her a minute early or a slide early um we decided that the tech stock would be our annual um professional development activity. I've been in contact with Daryl Ensminger and um, the deal is if you want to help out, you get free registration and you can also sign up for one of these sessions. Unless of course you're helping out and you're already presenting one of these, then you won't be able to do that. Um, so I know a lot of people said they're already going. That's July 15th. It's kind of like an all day thing. I was hoping that if it's okay with you guys, we could put our annual meeting or our summer meeting at the lunchtime, so we could just kind of meet during lunch. It might not have as much of a, um, you know, a hefty agenda. So we just kind of at least get that one meeting in for the summer, regroup, get ready for the fall, and then kind of, you know, if, and if you can't make that meeting, it'll be more toward I think the lunch hour. I think to do it afterward is a little bit. Um, those days are fun and exciting, and by the time I'm done, I'm tired. So I think that would be a good thing. So we'll plan the lunch. Anybody? Everybody okay with that to do it during lunchtime? Okay. So 
So we'll set that up that way and we'll figure out a place for that. And then you can get the PowerPoint and at the end of the night, or maybe we'll float a, a sheet around at some point in time, if, or you can just email me if you want to help out. I need to know by the end of the month so we can get you on the list and you can get your free registration, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I don't have the logistics for that, but um, there's a lot of really good things and I definitely like this Black Rocket choice there. And there's a lot of good fun things. So I believe from what I understand, I'm doing fun with Finch. So if you're interested in doing something with Finch, might throw a couple of Spheros in there at the same time. If you don't know what they are, you'll find out then. Um, any questions on that? So where we'll is, float around. This event happening? What? Where is the location? It's going to be at Stockton. Okay. Yeah, uh, that's part of like the tech stock because it's at Stockton. So okay. it's at Stockton. It is um, Michelle. Is it it's at in the, the campus center? And it's uh, probably in F wing. So um, and in the just so a wing down from where we normally meet. Yeah. <clears throat> What's your name? So. Pulsinelli? Yeah, Pulsinelli. Pulsinelli. Well, I guess this is the way I introduced myself. Hi, this is Phil. <laughs> <laughs> I've been dying to meet you. Yeah, you too. Pulsinelli. And now you're at the same table at the same meeting. It just works like that. Yes, you're the one. So professional development, I there's actually going to be a Google doc that you can go to look at and we're going to try to keep that updated between the north central and southern jersey chapters we're trying to uh make a new um google doc for all the summer things you know if you opportunities for prof uh, teachers and professors to work in the summertime to get extra um stipends in or get extra pd hours if you can't fit them in the other times so or just to learn something new uh, but this is a list of some of the other things and when you get the powerpoint you just click on it um, but we've got the workshops. Make my classroom to yours was just coming right up next week. Yeah. Wednesday. Um, and then um, I don't know how many people are going to that. And I got an email on Edu Gaming Conference. Um, most of these are free. I think this one actually has a small stipend to it that's sponsored by Rutgers. Um, I just got an email on that a day or two ago. So we'll try to keep updating this Google Doc. So if you're interested in those kind of opportunities, let me know if you want to get an email. If you don't have the Google Docs, you want an email once in a while, we'll start maybe a, a share list for that. I don't know too much about this one. I didn't get too many. That's teach Meet. Okay, well, that was up for debate a couple of times. Teach, teach Me, Teach Me. Okay. Already. All right. Um, I don't know about the, I don't know if Lehigh is on there. I'll have to check. All right. I, well, it's in Pennsylvania, so maybe not. Um, I will, I'd like to update that first before you post it to the, okay. Update. Teach yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's, um. No, I'll do it when we're done and then we'll post okay. the PowerPoint to the, okay. Questions on that? Okay. Moving on. Um, so we do like every Wednesday uh, of this, every other month, the second Wednesday. So like guessing the next one was today, next one would be at the 15th and then the following on September 9th would be two months later. And that would be the second Wednesday. So if you want to write that date down, if everybody's okay with the schedule of the every other month, it seems to be good. We get good participation. Thank you all. Um, and then we're also going to need some volunteers or some presentation topics. And it's really helpful if you kind of let us know. Maybe someone who's presenting the CS first already could um, talk about it or something else. So please send me some ideas of what you'd like to hear about. So, you know, you get to hear what you like to hear about or what you're interested in. And then um, tech stock. Oh, and shout outs. I would like to try some shout outs. So I know Adam Swift was selected as an AP reader for computer science and you're nominated for a science teacher award. I left that blank because I wasn't sure what that was called. So good for him. And thank you to the tech organizers for Tech Trek. How's that coming along? Wonderful. Wonderful? Yes, we actually, um, I'm setting up the meet and greet for May 30th, it's going to be here at the um, event in the, uh, the event room in the campus center. Um, that's going to be for all the volunteers and the students that are coming in, and for the parents. So Tech Trek is part of um, the AAUW is uh, sponsoring a week long program for girls in who are rising eighth graders or rising rising eighth graders, rising eighth graders to come in and spend a week. It's a very very inexpensive. It's almost free um, opportunity then for stay overnight yes. and get immersed in different kinds of technology. Thanks. Okay. And we yeah. There are um what is there 
can be volunteer for sector just to come and observe what well volunteers for I'm actually the volunteer coordinator, and I could have used you a long time ago. But um, as However. of right now, all of our positions are filled. Um, but we may be still looking for uh, speakers, so I can now sure. put you in. It's term. about app inventor, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Okay. Great. Anybody else see um, Dawn? If you have anything you can speak about to them, so I guess they still need speakers. But great job on that, and look excited. That's because the first time. It's a new initiative. We also have Team Tech coming up, and that's in June. Anybody here involved in that and organizing that? Okay, that's a AAUW, um, IEEE, uh, day-long activities. It's going to be June 4th. That's for um, high school girls, uh, June, freshmen, sophomore, junior girls to get them <coughs> interested in technology type things. And that's all I have to say before we have Rama come on and present about Raspberry Pi, because I'm really excited about that. Any questions, comments? Mm -hmm. Who's overseeing the Teen Tech? Teen Tech? Teen Tech. I don't know who's, um, I know Claudine's been involved, Claudine Keenan, and um, the AAUW people locally. I can get that information for you. I can call Thank you. Any other comments, questions before we move on to Rama and some real fun Raspberry Pi, which I'm really excited about. And thank you for offering to present. I'm really excited. Do you want me to do your presentation up here? Yeah. Okay, so I need to go to his PowerPoint. So I need to stop sharing. No, don't stop sharing. I can just um, save this maybe and go right to the Okay. 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 Um, if you just give me one second okay, sure. to make sure that we're capturing you. Sorry, they didn't. They didn't. The cord on this is very wonky. Okay, hold on. Let's see. Oh, because it's oh, it's not capturing you anyway. It's a screenshot. Okay, go ahead. Just go ahead and I'll. I don't know if it's going to video this. I'm going to have to just bring this over when you're doing it. in terms of my in terms of my yeah. Yeah, I've been 
the history of the was I'm still developing my ideas. I history of the audio production is supposed to be a music audio. I'm trying to get it. Yeah. So, because the music was also small, so it's a general study. Okay, he's going to just start presenting now, so um, we can just keep rolling with the sessions. Hi, everyone. Uh, now that we have had our dinner, let's have some dessert, <laughs> raspberry pie. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. So uh, my name is Rama. Uh, I live in Linwood. I'm a IT consultant by profession. Uh, I'm a father of three kids, and I love uh, computer science. So I'm going to talk about Raspberry Pi. Uh, before I start, how many of you have have a Raspberry Pi or know about Raspberry Pi? Okay. Have you? Done something with the Raspberry Pi? I have no. noobs on there right now. Uh, what's that? Noobs. Okay, new. Okay, noobs. Okay. Just got it about okay. a month and a half ago, and trying to fit time in to start playing with it. Okay. Okay, Raspberry Pi was developed by a team in UK who who felt that uh, there is uh, a lack of enthusiasm as far as you know uh, STEM is concerned. Uh, which used to be there in the late 1990s. So uh, they wanted to develop a extremely cheap computer which could be used by students to learn STEM. And uh, the good thing about uh, the Raspberry Pi is it costs only $35. And as uh, the founder of Linux said, uh, it enables uh, failure. So even if you break a Raspberry Pi, it doesn't really hurt you so much as compared to a you know, personal computer or a laptop. So the Raspberry Pi is for anybody who wants to uh, experiment with it, or who is a hobbyist, or wants to make some electronic circuits, uh, or you know, any kind of creative or uh, discovery. And the Pi is just a printed circuit board. It's a raw electronic board. It, uh, it captures the engineering in STEM. So you, all you get is the raw printed circuit board, and you have to connect all the peripherals. You have to install all the software. So you learn everything about how to create a personal computer, how to load different kinds of software, how to do networking how to uh, do different kinds of programming. So it's really a catalyst for STEAM. Uh, the Pi is completely open source. It uses the Linux operating system, which is again open source. Has anybody used Linux over here? No? OK. So Linux is an industrial strength operating system which is used on most of the servers on the World Wide Web. It's used in any large organization. They don't use Windows. They use Linux as their server operating system, or some people call it Unix. Microsoft is also planning to give a Windows 10 free of cost for students on the Raspberry Pi. So. Uh, we will uh, probably late September we'll have Windows 10 available for the Raspberry Pi. <coughs> so what all comes on the Raspberry Pi? We got Scratch available on the Raspberry Pi. It comes preloaded on the Noops. Uh, what is that? Noops is uh, out of the box software, and it uh, Scratch is available by default. But we can't load Scratch 2, which is the latest one, because of the dependency on Flash. So we have the older version of Scratch available on the Raspberry Pi. So 
the Raspberry Pi that they sold a couple years ago is Scratch on that as well? Yeah, Scratch okay. is available. Scratch is part of the uh, Linux uh, bundle of operating system. And it's called Raspberry Pi. That Pi in Raspberry Pi stands for Python. So Python is the default programming language for the Raspberry Pi. And why Raspberry? Because Apple, Mango, all were all taken. <laughs> so Raspberry. All right. We can also learn languages like C, C Sharp, Java, Ruby, Perl, etc. We can learn uh, the basis of the webs like HTML, CSS. Uh, we can install a LAMP stack. Does anybody know what's a LAMP stack? Uh, LAMP stack stands for L stands for Linux. A stands for Apache. Apache is the web server. M stands for MySQL, which is the database. And P stands for PHP, which is the scripting language. So when you talk about a web server, you need a LAMP stack. So Linux at the bottom, web server on top of that. Then you need a database to store information. And you need a scripting language to, like SQL, to retrieve content. So that's the LAMP stack. And then we've got uh, content management systems like you must have heard of WordPress, Drupal which are like uh, uh, user-friendly front-ends to develop websites. We have something called the Sonic Pi to create music on the Raspberry Pi. So it's a complete, it's a complete electronic synthesizer program. We also have Open Office, which is just like MS Office for your productivity. Pi also has what kids like the most, uh, Minecraft. Minecraft. So, and we can do Minecraft programming using Python. So you you can create uh, all those structures using uh, Python or automation. You have other games like Pong, Snake, those old world games. Uh, it says uh, stop working. It says please turn on stylus. Oh, really? Turn off stylus. Is this the same maker as the $9 computer? Is that the same? It came out with that $9 computer now. You're talking about chip. Yeah, that one. Yeah. The same people? No. no, they're different. Okay. They, this is a Raspberry Pi Foundation based of UK. Okay. And uh, the chip is a US based group. Okay. Uh, they are still in the uh, crowdfunding stage. Okay. So. Yeah. I just read it. Right. In fact, I read it about it through ACM News. Yeah, that was yeah. the second one. Yeah. Uh, first one was PC Magazine. Right, right. Okay. So, uh, Pi, the Raspberry Pi, as I said, is an integrated circuit board also popularly known as system on a chip. Uh, it's almost similar to what we have in our uh, Apple phones or our Android phones, similar kind of a broadcam chip, but kind of a little slower than what we have in our uh, cell phones. Uh, when we look at Pi, uh, you know, there's something called the Arduino microcontroller. That's a very uh, popular microcontroller used for electronic projects. Uh, but what makes Pi different than the Arduino is that Arduino is uh, uh, Arduino does not provide uh, that kind of network connectivity and that kind of operating system capabilities that as the Pi provides. So what do we need to build a PC? We need a central processing unit. We need a video processing unit. We need random access memory. We need a permanent memory like a hard disk drive. We need input output ports. We need a power supply. We need an operating system. And we need application software. So how does the Pi take care of it? Pi has a 900 megahertz quad core processor. It has got input output ports like the USB port. It has got the latest Pi has got four USB ports. It has got one HDMI port through which we are displaying 
it has got an ethernet port for wired connectivity we can use wireless uh, adapters to provide uh, wireless connectivity it has got audio jack and composite video for older uh, monitors it has got the capability to connect it to a uh, lcd panel to make a sort of a laptop uh, it has got uh, csi uh, like csi the csi reminds me of you know the csi tv thing so csi here is the camera serial interface so you can connect a camera and have high definition uh, video it has got a now it does not have a hard drive it has got a micro sd card slot so the operating system is loaded on to the sd card similar to our you know the uh, card we have in our cameras and that's how linux and the programs get loaded and uh, it has got a video graphics core to give uh, 1080p high definition video what are the peripherals required so 35 dollars is the cost of this uh, raspberry pi apart from that we need a power supply uh, it uses this power supply which is just like the charger of our phone it needs an sd card hdmi cable ethernet cable usb wireless adapter wired usb keyboard or mouse so the idea is to keep the cost low uh, scavenge for these peripherals at your home or office and try to use them to keep the cost low so uh, the pi as i said runs on the linux software so there are several flavors of uh, linux available as i mentioned one of the distribution popular is called noobs which is out of the box software it's the easiest uh, distribution very easy to install and configure apart from that we have all these uh, uh, like fedora snappy ubuntu there is another good distribution called the cano os uh, there is a company called Cano, which is a Kickstarter campaign. They they are selling a Cano kit for one forty nine dollars. It contains all these peripherals in a very in a fancy way uh, with uh, fancy keyboard, mouse, and peripherals and the Raspberry Pi. So that's how that OS looks. How, how is that spelled? What is K A N O Cano? K A N O. Yeah. So for uh, one forty nine dollars, you get a PC in a box. Yeah, so that's their uh, flavor of uh, the Linux operating system. It's more, uh, it has all the fancy bells and whistles and, you know, colorful screens for, especially for kids to quickly, uh, you know, use the Linux operating system as compared to uh, this one. This. Yeah, this one is not so fancy, whereas that one, you see, it's more kit friendly uh, graphical interface so that's what this company cano sells but the operating system is open source so we can still use it on our raspberry pi pi without buying the uh, cano kit for 149 dollars from where can you buy a pi uh, <coughs> element 14 adafruit cana kit or amazon.com the latest one is a quad core processor so we should go for this raspberry pi 2 model b i think it's a this at 35 dollars it's a good gift for christmas or you know for the kids you know. we really don't find anything in toys or us or for kids you know so so how do we build the pc uh, we download the operating system and basically use an imaging tool to update the SD card and then put the SD card into the Raspberry Pi. So this is how it's connected the same thing. A Lego board. <laughs> yeah. So any questions so far? So uh, we can also make the Raspberry Pi uh, literally headless. What it means is we don't require to have a monitor. You could be anywhere in the campus and still access the Raspberry Pi. So it's like a remote control uh, 
so we have something called the VNC remote control software. We have a server portion and the client portion. So wherever you are, you can connect to the uh, Raspberry Pi and get the same screen on your laptop or smartphone. I'm sure some of you must have used the VNC client. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, have any of one of you used VNC client or experienced remote troubleshooting? Yes. Where your PC has a yes. problem, somebody connects <laughs> remotely and grabs your keyboard and mouse and screen and mm -hmm. fix the problem. Same way, you can get the keyboard, mouse, and screen of the Raspberry Pi remotely and use it. So you don't need to literally sit here. Is the VPN client is installed on it already? No, yeah, no we install the VNC uh, okay. server and we install the VNC client on our laptop okay. and then we can remotely connect. So then uh, Linux has, uh, you can use Linux in two ways. One is the graphical user interface, the other is the uh, terminal option. Terminal option is like a black and white uh, DOS screen, right? So if you want to, and the power of Linux is not through the graphical user interface, it's through the, the terminal where you can run different scripts and programs. So you can get, again, remote access to the terminal through a, a tool called PuTTY, P -U -T -T -Y. So you install that on your desktop and you are connected to the Linux terminal. And the good thing is it's a multi-user thing. So with one Raspberry Pi, multiple users could be connected to the same Pi. So if you want 10 students to access the one Pi, they can all use the PuTTY client and get access. Then if you want to copy files from your PC to the Pi or vice versa, you can use something called secure copy. It's a, again a graphical tool. So on the left side you see your Pi, on the right side you see your PC, you just drag and drop files. So this is the terminal screen. So this is a screenshot of the terminal from my PC. So this is the screenshot for secure copy. On the left is my PC. On the right you see the, uh, the Linux file structure. So you can drag and drop files. So if you have developed something in scratch and you want to copy it to your PC, you just drag and drop. You can learn Linux through uh, the Raspberry Pi. So you can learn almost, you can be a Linux systems administrator, you can, uh, which is a professional thing, uh, you know, highly sought after skill. So you can learn Linux through the command line interface. So these are some of the commands. As I said, Scratch is available bundled with, it's called RASBN. The Noobs uh, Linux distribution is called, uh, you know, there's a Linux thing called Debian and Raspberry, so it's called Raspbian. So th this is Raspbian. So Scratch is available on this. Uh, some of you may have used Turtle graphics. So Scratch, you can use Turtle graphics through Scratch or Python. So this is an example of Turtle graphics doing some shapes. Again, so this is an example of Python code used on the uh, Raspberry Pi to draw using the turtle graphics add-in. Again, another example. It's using some loops. So as I said, the Pi stands for Python. Python is a good introductory programming language because the, it is uh, syntactically, there's a less overhead on it. It's not uh, so particular about, you know, the parentheses, semicolons, and all those. And you don't need to declare variables. Uh, variables are automatically understood. You can even learn the popular Django web development language, which is a Python add-in. So there are 
both Python 2 and the latest Python 3 are available on the Pi. See, as you see here, um, I, I wrote this pizza per person is equal to 2. So I did not define pizza per person as an integer. So it automatically understood that it's an integer. So that's uh, the benefit of Python. So uh, when I say first name is equal to Rama, I didn't define first name as a string. So these are, as I said, there's Minecraft and the Pi. Everybody knows Minecraft, right? So as I said, uh, we can write Python programs to <coughs> manage the Minecraft space. So we download Minecraft. So this is how we download it. So here I wrote a small program which says on the screen, hi everyone at CSTA. Whatever I'm saying, I tried it out so that it really works. So this is another program which, which determines the position of a player in the Minecraft world and displays that. So it says you are located at so and so x, y, z coordinates. So here we are creating a structure automatically in uh, Minecraft. We have created a, a diamond building with diamond blocks. This one here. As I said, we can uh, create, there's a complete music synthesizer application which uses programming to create um, a music. It's called Sonic Pi. So this is an example of Sonic Pi where it's looping six times and playing some patterns. So this is the uh, Kano kit bundle I was talking about. This costs $149. It contains this fancy keyboard, uh, speaker, uh, mouse, and the Raspberry Pi. And so here, uh, what Kano has done is it's using the uh, the Blockly codes to uh, teach programming. So we don't really write code. We use drag and drop blocks just like Scratch and uh, uh, produce the same code which we manually wrote in Minecraft. So kids can quickly learn uh, coding in Minecraft using this block method. And it has got all the stickers, badges, points, and entire social community. So it's more uh, uh, kids, kid friendly and kids like it. Then we, I talked about LAMP stack and content management system. So uh, we can load that on the Pi and learn about that. Uh, talking about Google, Google has developed their own distribution called the Google Coder. So uh, just like we load Raspbian, we can load uh, the Google Coder. It's Linux bundled with the web package. So they have projects online available. If you uh, Google Google Coder, you will be able to uh, download different projects which you can play around and develop websites. So it's like a sandbox to learn web development. It's from uh, Google Coder. It's a part of Google. Then um, uh, there's this thing called BlueJ. Uh, it's, uh, it's again developed by uh, people in the UK. It's a Java learning platform. Um, uh, just last, uh, last last week, there was this presentation by this guy from UK, right? On, um, it's not called BlueJ, it's called um, I mean, it's a higher version of BlueJ. I forget the name. It's in yeah. PowerPoint yeah. So, uh, so this is for students especially. It's a graphical environment where you learn object-oriented language. Then uh, the Noobs comes with something called uh, Mathematica, or and it uses what is called the Wolfram language. It's a uh, 
tool to learn from simple mathematics to advanced, you know, PhD level mathematics. So it's a complete programming package. Uh, costs uh, costs a lot, but available for free for from the Raspberry Pi Foundation. So that's the in STEM, the maths. You can do it here. Another popular programming language is Ruby on Rails. It's a web framework. Uh, again, through the Raspberry Pi Foundation, uh, Ruby on Rails is available with a lot of examples and easy to use applications. Now the interesting part that's called uh, GPIO. The Raspberry Pi has something called the general purpose input output pins. So by input output pins we mean we can use the pins, the electronic hardware as an input or as an output. When I say input, input from any kind of a sensor, say a temperature sensor or a carbon monoxide sensor or a simple switch, you can send an input. And output means like, see through that output that LED is lighting up. So through the code like Python, we can define whether a pin is an input pin or an output pin and create all sorts of electronic projects. So this is the uh, layout of the input output pins on the Raspberry Pi. So we can uh, learn pretty much uh, about, you know, things like, you know, simple things like electricity, voltage, you know, uh, resistors, transistors, integrated circuits. So it's a transition from, uh, you know, some time back we looked at little bits, which were, you know, I, I think you remember the little bits, which are basically like scratch blocks of, you know, electronics, which you connect together and create circuits. Here, we're actually using the real transistors and integrated circuits to create uh, projects. And uh, these electronic projects can also be controlled through scratch. So uh, some teacher in the UK has created a scratch add-in, which allows you to control the input output pins through scratch. So when you go to scratch, you'll see some additional options coming up where you say broadcast high, broadcast low, uh, select this pin as input output. So there's been a lot of uh, uh, electronic projects being done, especially there's this organization called Tech Girls. They have conducted uh, very good workshops on electronic projects using the Raspberry Pi. And uh, their website has all the resources available for use. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, now, and now what we are going to do is, what's the time? How much time do we have? Okay. Yeah, very good. So now what we are going to do is we are going to build our own computers. So I'm going to give you the raw PCBs and you're going to load the operating system and configure the Raspberry Pis. I got, yeah, let's do that. <coughs> So I I know you're gonna walk up here and it'll start working. Uh, okay, I need to go back to the PC, which I did. I went right here. Wait, wait, you're not getting the controls. I know. Yeah, we're back to PC. Okay, so give it a second. Oh, I have to give it a second. No, no, I thought that was the case. Here, let me see on that. No, oh, okay. Oh, okay, yeah.
I haven't used this old style. I know, it's so old. Yeah. Okay, I used that. So are you doing this at each table or are you inviting them up? Okay. So what do you need? You need to this display, right? So we need a HDMI, right? So you can come here and connect it to the HDMI board. No, no. Look He's actually showing people how to use it, so if you could come up and. Yeah, we'll build it now. Yeah. Okay. The, the so over here. HDMI is there, right? Yes. Now, next we need a keyboard and a mouse, right? So, for keyboard and a mouse, I have this Bluetooth keyboard and mouse, and I have connected the, the Logitech uh, keyboard and mouse. So this is the Logitech Bluetooth adapter, right? This is the USB hub. What I'm doing is taking this. So, and this is a USB hub. So it's basically extending this. I'm just putting it there. Right? Now we have a keyboard and mouse with the Bluetooth. We have a network cable connectivity. Right. What else do we need? And uh, every time I turn the This is the power adapter, a regular like a cell phone adapter. So we are going to connect change. So we're not getting things apart. It's good, but uh, before we do that, let's put as I said, there's no hard drive in this. So what we have is this micro SD card. <coughs> I uh, already loaded the operating system on this. Over here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can we put it in her Raspberry Pi? No, see. Okay, done. Now, we give it power. Okay. Right. Now, we see there. You want to load just up? <laughs> what distribution is this one? This is the news from the Raspberry Pi Foundation. So you need to select the first one. Use this to select. The, yeah. Can I ask to you a favor? Is the mouse working? Can I just yeah. Because we get a nice shot of your butt. Sure. We get a nice shot of your butt, but uh, please. Stop. <laughs> this is. Yeah. Oh, this is no, where the picture is. Oh, there we go. Just navigate the mouse. Yeah. No. So, yes. Yeah, yeah, it's so just not working. While that happens, I'll we'll survey the group. Mm -hmm. The good thing is. We can have several SD cards and have different stuff happening on different cards. You know. So just replace them and you have a new PC. Mm -hmm. You could have program A on this one, program A on this one. 
Are you ready, Karen? And take the feet into the throat, feet into the buttocks, the adrenal, that to come forward. The forward is to keep the brains in the upper end system. So, this is the other one. This is camera. Sorry, it, 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 we're, we're getting a nice gluteus maximus amendment so. <laughs> <laughs> on the camera. No, I keep standing. Uh, yeah, right. so, so I keep uh, videoing his. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to be the stuck. Well, I can get, I can get your. <laughs> no, you're good. That chair's perfect right there. I'm too curious. I love curious. Curious is great. Just go to the left. Beginner, beginner is the prerequisite. If you know everything, then we'll scan the crowd. Yeah. Just to pre at the beginning, you said it was thirty-five dollar fee. What? What does that thirty-five dollars get? Get you access to the network? No, it's not a fee. Thirty-five dollars is the cost of this printed circuit board. You get it. Oh, it's okay. yours to keep. Gotcha. Yeah. Everything else is open source. Right? All the software, everything is free. <laughs> She's not paying. This <laughs> is your 15 minutes of fame. <laughs> It's Somebody can. Yeah, that's the Cano OS, which is more visually friendly. What does it say? It says, I'm Cano. Thanks for bringing me to life. What should I call you? <laughs> I think that's it. And I put in there, call me Neo, and I press enter. No, no, I need yeah. Did you hit enter? I did. Oh, okay. Yes. Oh, the white rabbit. Oh, really? <laughs> so oh, the white rabbit. Is that because I made the matrix reference, or? No, it's okay. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Okay. It's like, uh, yeah. That would be so like that's pretty yeah. yeah. Type type CD space rabbit hole. Okay. Type that. Yes. Yeah. Okay. CD space rabbit hole. Enter. <clears throat> that's not gonna work. <laughs> Now, if we use this, uh, the the program that you had on there, where would we get that program? From the Raspberry Pi dot org website. Okay. So we download it. There's a fee for that, or no? Open source free. Open source free. Or if you buy a bundle from say Amazon dot com, yes, they give you preloaded SD card, okay. which already has that. You know that way. If you want to start off right away, right. Okay. Try again. I was supposed to do something there. Okay. So Type start X. Start X. So we should sing the Jeopardy song. Do, do. What's that? We should sing the Jeopardy song. Yeah, we do, should. Do, do. I'm a little frightened now. What's going to happen? When is it going to happen? What's going to happen when we least expect it? All right. Made a computer. Now let's give it new powers. 
Start setup. So I just press enter. Yes. Yes. Oh yeah. Navigate the mouse and then to the green. Uh, yeah. Start setup. And then click the mouse. Yeah. Click. Yeah. Okay. Connect to the world. Let's set connect. up Wi-Fi and bring okay. your Canada to life. No okay. internet. So we're going to connect. Okay. Help me find. Do I need to type something here? Which is the piece that connects to the internet? If it's the US, like the actual. The it is a Wi Fi dongle. Okay. Like an adapter. Okay. Yeah. It's a $7 Wi Fi adapter. It will pick up Wi Fi in the air? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Wi Fi from wherever it is air or. At $7? Yes. But yeah, what if you have a what if you have a closed system where you need a password or something like that? Yeah, in you fact, yeah, in fact, here at Stockton you have a right. password. So what they did is they connected here and then they went to the website and then typed the URL and then they took the password. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Ready to so do something here? You can see that. For now, close this. Okay. Is that what I want? Yeah. Choose your network one. number. Okay. Yeah. So I I don't know. I think it was. We're using one. One. Yeah. Use one. Yeah. Okay. Try one. And you can get closer to it. I can't. Know, but we know it's so now I need a password, right? Okay. No, it's because of the lights. The lights are right there. So you can't read that. Okay, so now what does he have to do to it? It's searching. It's searching for it? Okay. Can we do the crowd first that? Now, because this is not as complicated as a laptop or even our smartphone, that's the reason it's taking so long, right? It's the it's the first time you're configuring it. All right. Once it's ready, it will boot up within 30 seconds. So this is the initial one-time configuration. So this will be. It's not a try. So it's funny because all the kids that went to school with my son in middle school, they were playing around with Linux and everything. I'm like, where did you, why, like, why are you doing that? It is, if you're in it, yeah. They dig it. They do all sorts of stuff. <clears throat> We've got some beautiful scripts showing up there. Something. Yeah, it's easy. Is your camera broadcasting like a mirror? Pardon? Is your, is your camera broadcasting like a mirror? This is my camera right here. Right. So, so if yeah. On the screen, uh -huh. where the text was backwards. Sometimes it's weird. If we don't have an outside presenter next time, I think we should just like periscope it or meerkat it, just so we can, um, like, if somebody's not going to be coming in and speaking. That would be. Fun. It's not responding to. Yeah. Okay. So this is. We made it. You made a computer. Now let's give it new powers. So you can plug the hub into any of the into any of the the USBs. Okay. 
Now try. Here we are. <laughs> okay. Is that what it's going to say? Is that what it's going to say? This is the latest Raspberry Pi, the one with the four. Yeah, this one. One is a quad four, the other is a one four. Okay, so there is a quite a difference. Yes, yes. First, when you give Wi-Fi piece, which you've done, please take into account that the system will automatically reboot. If you don't want to use Wi-Fi, press enter. We do want to use Wi-Fi. Thank you, sir. I mean, we can skip for now. We can always configure it later. Okay. Yeah, that, that's uh, my um, the Hangout so app needs to be updated yeah. on that iPad. It's messy with your computer. Yes. <laughs> it's like, for real? I heard the sound. Yeah. Okay, so the speaker came out of this. Came out of this. the TV. Yeah, okay. through the HDMI. Okay. Your lines touching the edge. So the HDMI carries both video and noise. Yes. yes. So, we've so yes. no matter what, mo what monitor you plug in, it's it will allow you to configure it so that you can see everything? Okay. Yes. Skip the yeah. So you can create your own kids can create or we can create our own profile on the Cano community. Okay. You get your badges and everything. And you can share your work and like use their work. Like if they have created some castle in Minecraft. Nice work. You, can you made it. a computer, powered it up, and traveled to a whole new world. Now it's time to make and play with games, music, movies, and more. This is your desktop. To get started, click one of the level icons. You can make Snake, Pong, Minecraft, music, and much more on the internet. At the bottom of the screen, you'll find some useful controls. You can play with your settings and sound, check your connection, and even watch the brain think. If you have a question or need some help, just click on the question mark. Click this icon to return to the desktop. As you make and play, you'll earn points and level up. Click on your profile to see your rewards. You can build up badges, backgrounds, and new characters. Click on them to bring them to life. Your Kano computer can run thousands of apps. Click on the apps icon to find them. Are the apps free or Click on the K to see your whole system. One more. Click on Kano. Here you can get new apps and projects and see how your own skills stack up. That's it. Welcome to Kano. Your computer is open and its powers are at your command. Let's go. And it saves all our progress online. Just like we would use social media or something like that, like Facebook. Right. The Cano has given you a for the kids a kids friendly social environment where they can share their work. Just like Scratch, MIT has their you know where you share your work. Same way you can share work. So say if you want to learn, so if you want to go to Minecraft. Yeah, that one. Yeah, that, yeah that's Minecraft. Yeah. Ah, okay. You you can. Okay. You can. Uh, you can just say, uh, put a finish. Yeah. Here the mouse won't work. You have to use keyboard. Yeah, for now. Yeah, just. Yeah. So that's the difference between Cano and this one. This is very user friendly. This is like old world. This is Windows and right? Uh, yeah. But this is what makes us learn more. You know? Okay. Okay. I use I'm using the tab key. How did you? I hit tab, okay. and then I'm using the enter key. So, so it's like so old time. Remember there he had yeah. typed start x. <laughs> he typed start x. Right. So here also we type start x. Okay. Start Only thing there they made it little funny by you know, that exploding thing. Right. So the same start x is to start the x. X is for x windows. So the GUI you type start. X 
and the GUI. Minecraft is awesome. We can use cannon blocks to make it even cooler with code. The top half of the screen is Minecraft, creative mode. The bottom half is Cano Blocks. To move between them, press Tab to free your mouse and move it up or down. Click inside the Blocks window to start making all the cool stuff you see. The blocks are kept at the left. Click on a block, hold down the mouse, and drag it into the workspace. Now it's inside your program. You can change its power by clicking on it, or by connecting other blocks. You can copy them by right-clicking and clicking Duplicate. You can delete blocks by clicking on them and pressing Delete. Finally, press Make to bring your creation to life. Hey, guess what? Those blocks, they're real computer code. Click on Code in the bottom bar and you'll see what you've written in the Python programming language. This program goes straight into the game to change the way the rules work. Click Menu to start again or save your challenge. Don't forget to share your creation with the world. Now, follow the on-screen tips carefully to unlock more challenges, more blocks, and tons of rewards. Are you ready? Let's make Minecraft and become the master builder. Go to Scratch. You have your scratch a little bit? Okay. So this is our regular scratch. Okay, so you want to do something with make. It's a wizard which will walk you through the yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the Minecraft world. It looks a lot like normal Minecraft. But it has loads of extra powers. So, you can make things appear out of thin air using the magic of color box and code. Ready to start? Let's go. You, you use the control first, which is the orange. Wow, you, you just got teleported. The control, which is the orange. Okay, so um, take the second the one down. Wall. You can take the second one down, um, or you can use the flag. Either one will work. It shows you what you can do in Make Minecraft. I want to go. Stand on the diamond box to learn more. You're holding the camera. When you're ready, find a big empty patch of grass to start making. How many of you are there? Okay. No freebies. No freebies tonight? No one for each participant? Yeah, right. Is Oprah? <laughs> one for you and you. I love her, but I'm okay. Next. Next. Okay. Just change by clicking that down. Like, you can drag out a number of these scenes. Let's start simple. Okay, hit make. Yes, they are, because the controls are things that like stop and start and to repeat. And these are the actual motions that they'll do. You can make it change. Tab and click there. Um, so you get back you into this. So, now it's uh, so, so you can make him um, move 10 steps okay, so and then turn to block. Degrees. So okay, when you hit the steps, right? yeah, tab and go back. So he's doing that. <laughs> so you can, you can select a different operator. Uh, tab and click down click below there. And then put oh, under the mouse. So get back that. Right. And then try to move the mouse. You want to hit tab to stop moving. Yeah. This is yeah. sensitive. See, and that's you can see the mouse there. That's 
point in direction of 90 degrees. No. So you just you use the different keys to do the different things. Click. Click to click the post to chat block and drag it into this into its workspace. So drag it into the workspace. I believe this white area. Yeah. Okay. All right. Then and between the S and write a cool message. Right so many Thank you for jumping in. Good. Now hit make. Oh, now hit the Minecraft world. Now hit tab and click again. Uh, the monk should go to that tab and click. This is Minecraft. You need tab, but I don't see the mouse. You see it? I don't see it. If you move it faster. Yeah. There it is on the bottom. Okay, next. So next you're going to do something called teleport. Click on setters. Setters. Click on that. See it says click on setters. Yeah, click. Drag, grab that. Yeah, leave it there. Yeah. Numbers. Hit on numbers. Yeah. Pick that number thing and drag it into that. Yeah, there. Yeah. Yeah, it, yeah, it is there. Yeah, click it there. Yeah, connect it there. Yeah. Enter, enter the y value. Say so 40. 40? Yeah, 40. Okay. okay. Yeah. So it gave you the feeling of it flew into the air. The, oh, yeah, it's a flyer because y is like y axis. Right. So when you put 40, the screen went like this. Right. You get a feeling of flying. Oh, all right. Yeah. So we're 40 high, 40 yeah, high. Yeah. Gotcha. So that was a y, y axis. So now again, tab and tab, move your mouse. Do I hold tab down? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Difficult to explain, but right. come on. Tab and move it around. See? Yeah. Uh. Okay. So make a lake. I'm gonna make a lake. Okay. So for lake. So you put the setup again. Let's start by. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now go to. Uh, no. So here you are putting the length and width. So grab a number block. Yeah. So basically okay. you get the concept. Yes, it is. So and then you can actually see the code here. You can see. 
So listen, it, um, I'm going to officially adjourn so people can leave if they choose to. Um, so meeting adjourned. Thank you all for coming. Thank you for presenting. Really informative. Fantastic. Stop broadcast. Stop broadcast.